ಓಕ್ರದುಂಡಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕರು ಮೇ ದೇವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯಂ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರು ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಾರ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಜ್ಞಾನದ ಶಾಂತರೂಪಿಂದ್ರಶೇಖರ ಗುರು ಮುಂದೆ ಶ್ರೀಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ನಮಃ ಅಥ ಷೋಧ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚಿಂತೀ ಮನಶ್ಚಲಮಸ್ಥಿ ಮನಃಲಾತ್ಮಕ ಮನಃ by the very definition mind is chanchala mind always will be a chanchala chanchalatmakam fik it will be fickle fickle mind so astiram doesn't uh, doesn't stay in one place doesn't stay doesn't remain fixed in one object when one thing so therefore yatah yatah nischarati so whenever the mind moves goes goes away the mind which is chanchalam which is astiram then niyam here that will is involved in the beginning you have to bring back the mind to the object of meditation atmani eva atmani eva vasham atmani eva nayet may you bring it back to atma atmani eva vasham nayet under the vasha under the fold make the mind making the mind atmani vasham vasham means in, in your control that is vasha making bringing the mind under your control may you bring it back to the object of meditation atmani iti so here the nididhyasana is talked about that is the 
the effort involved in the beginning to focus the mind on the object of meditation. So chanchalam, chanchalam, the mind is always in a state of flux. Flux means it moves zigzag from one object to another object. It keeps on moving. Movement means it is in terms of thinking. The mind thinks one object and thinks another object, but there would be some connection between the two thoughts. So it like that picks up another another thought, another by connection. So like that it will keep on it will keep on moving. It will remain in a state of flux. Therefore, it is unsteady. Mind is asthiram. For meditation, the mind has to be stira. Atman. The, the previous shloka where Bhagavan said Atmasavistha Vanakrutva. So that means you have the stiratam is required to place the mind on the Atma. So whenever the mind goes, for what are the reason? Etaha Nishcharati moves away, goes away from the object of meditation. And here the object of meditation is Atma, then Tataha, then Niyam here, Yam Datu. Having yam, restraining, bringing back. Previous, before also we saw. Yatro paramate chittam, uparamate. Uparama, bring it back is that uparama. Bringing back the mind, yatra uparamate, the mind that bringing it back and placing it. Bringing it back, placing and at some time, at some at one point it become remain in a, the object of meditation. It's called uparama. Withdrawal of, of the mind from the, the external vishaya, uparama, uparati. So here it is, uh, yamya, having restraining, bringing it back. Atmani, atmani, eva vasham nayet. So, with reference to Atma, may one bring the mind into one's hands. Vasha means one's hand, one's control. One's hands means one control. So, may one bring back the mind to the Atma, the object of meditation, because it is the Atma. So, therefore, the Atma has to be contemplated upon the words of the, the Shastam, the expressions of uh, the Shruti regarding Atma. As we saw before, Agam Nityaha Shuddha Buddha Mukta Subhavaha Shivaha Avyaha Atma. So therefore, <clears throat> that is uh, that object of meditation, Atma, the may one bring it back. Here the mind is dealt with because it is a mind that is placed in Atma. So now we can use the expression the mind which is placed in Atma. Because it is explained before. Atma Samstha placing the mind on Atma is appreciating the fact that all the three are Atma. That is the placing the mind on Atma. From that, if the mind moves away, you bring it back. That is what he that is what you said here. It is a mind that is to be that has to contemplate about Atma. And also it is a mind that goes away. Goes away away from the Jaya Vishaya Atma. Therefore, for the mind, Bhagavan uses two words, chanchala and astira. It is universal. Mind is chanchala and astira. Astiram manaha, chanchala atpaka manaha. Chanchala means the mind which is in a state of constant flux. Always it is in a state of flux. That is the nature of the mind. So, mind is that which, which is Chanchala, which, will, which should be chanchala only. If it is not chanchala, then it is not in mind. So it is always in a state of flux. This is in fact the nature. Nature of the mind. This is how the mind is made. And it is good that it is made so. Otherwise thinking is not possible. The mind remains in only in one thing, one thought. Then other thoughts are not possible. Therefore knowledge cannot happen. 
So therefore, it is good that it is made so. Otherwise, you would stuck in one thought. You would become stuck in one thought. And the mind being chanchala, it is also austere, meaning that it is not at all steady. Always being in a state of flux, the mind is not steady, not firm. Therefore, these two words qualify each other. Huh? Because it is chanchala, therefore it is austere. Because it is austere, therefore chanchala. Being in flux, the mind is not steady. Chanchala, chanchala tvad astiram. Because it is chanchala, therefore it is not stira. Because it is astira, therefore it is chanchala. Therefore, astira tva chanchalam. Being unsteady, the mind is in the state of flux. So, so therefore each word qualifying each, each other. This is how the mind would be. Therefore, mind is, itself is not a problem. Even the yoga sutra, Atato, at the yoga anushasanam, yoga ha, chitta virti nirodaha, not stopping, not cessation. It is regulation. So, regulation, the thoughts can be regulated, but thoughts cannot, should not be suppressed, cannot be suppressed. So, it's about regulating the, the mind. So, there, only the abhyasa, the practice is involved. So therefore, the Bhagavan, yes, Bhagavan says, Bhagavan further describes the mind by saying, it goes out, that it goes out, nischarati. That it goes out is not a problem. It is natural. Because it is natural, therefore it is not a problem. Because the mind's nature is chanchala rastira, it goes away from the chosen object of meditation for whatever reason, etaha, etaha. For whatever reason, etaha is esmat, 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 for whatever the reason, panchami, arate. The sense of panchami. Therefore, for whatever the reason, you hear something, the sound of a bird perhaps, in your meditation, and you go along with the sound. You recognize it as the warble of a particular bird, and you try to identify the kind of bird, and so on. Or someone says something, and off the mind goes. You don't even need the outside world for the mind to go away. The whole world is right in your head, the form of thoughts and memory. This is not why we have gathered so many lifetime experiences so that we can sit back and enjoy thinking about them. Even from inside them, all the, all the birds wobble. All the people you have ever known do this and, and done that. Therefore, we have enough reasons for the mind to behave as it does. So it has a huge collection of chunks. Therefore, mind us enough thing to Think on, think on. Therefore, it's natural for the mind to be in a state of flux, tranchala, and therefore astera, and vice versa. For whatever the reason, the mind goes away from the object of meditation. And from that reason, from that situation, tataha, tataha, disciplining it, niyamya, niyamya, you bring it back. Here, Shankara Bhagat Pada gives an excellent piece of advice on how to do this. You don't try to pull it back. Rather, you look at the object to which the mind went. Because Atma is everywhere. So wherever the mind goes, Atma is. So let that be it, it, it's a, uh, let that itself be your object of attention for the time being. And what do you find? Does it exist? Does, the, does that object, does it exist independent of consciousness or Atma? Does it continue to exist even if you question it in this way? No. You find that it becomes mithya. So, so therefore you get back to satyam, the truth of it, which is yourself. So wherever the mind goes, there Atma is. So therefore if you <clears throat> think that it is away from Atma, then the mind has to the mind has to come to Atma alone because it is satyam. The entire Veda talks about the subject to object, action, instruments of action, and so on, all the karakas, karta, karma, karana, ityadi. And then in the last chapter, it says that all that was said was said so far is not true because it's all mithya. All the karakas are mithya. Satyam is Atma alone. Brahma Arpanam Brahma Vahi, in the fourth chapter also, fourth chapter only we have seen, all the karaka, karaka upamardana. Everything is resolved to Brahma. So by looking into every the very thought that it, it took away, that, that took you away, the very object that you took away from the object of meditation, 
the thought itself along with its object is converted into mithya by simply simply by seeing the truth of it is that thought and the, or the object referred to by the thought is it satyam is it uh, it is it is atma it is atma therefore the object is not satyam therefore you have to land on atma alone that is by simply seeing the truth of the object therefore bhagavan says here says that one should bring back the mind into one's own hands vasham one's own vasham as it moves away from you may you bring it back their will is involved to bring it back to the object of meditation they was to meaning may you return to the contemplation of atma so atma is not it's located somewhere you bring it back to atma is everywhere so wherever it goes you think about the reality of that then you have to then the mind has to land on atma alone the four no force is used here you just look at whatever took your mind away that by converting that the object of attraction into the object of meditation the mind has to land on atma alone in other words your attention is turned from the distraction of the the vastu itself in vastu it vastu itself to consciousness therefore you have no problem what object is going to distract you then by the strength of this practice by the strength of this strength of practice of this meditation dhyana yoga the mind resolves in atma there is no question of distraction or false identity for the person the mind remains as a mind alone and therefore it doesn't pose any problem because we want to make the mind steady therefore and the mind is not steady therefore there is a struggle let the mind be unsteady still the mind can be placed on atma by this this is what shankar bhagavad pada also as uh, some you see here he says may you may you, may you contemplate on the object object of distraction as atma therefore it is all the way atma alone so that is the niyam ya uparamanam the next shloka bhagavan discusses the result of such so this is how the meditate this is how meditation to be done what is medita- oh, meditation to be done yato yato nishchari tatastato niyam etat niyam ya etat this is how meditation to be done tatah tatah yat etat niyam ya etat referring to the mind the object of meditation a grammatical point etat niyam ya etat niyam ya for that karma is etat etat is referring to mind etat is tapasakalinga mind is tapasakalinga therefore etat pronoun because that is what is referred to in the first line etao yato nischarati manaha iti manaha manasi manamsi so in the second line the etat the pronoun is used referring to the mind and that is the object for niyam ya so etat niyam ya means manaha niyam ya having con- having bringing back the mind with reference to oneself atmani atmani eva asham nayet so atma is saptami bhakti therefore the translation with reference to with reference to atma with reference to self alone atmani atmani vasham nayet iti then in the next shloka bhagwan discusses the results of such meditation let us chant that what will be the result of meditation prashanta manaha therefore this the shloka begins prashanta manasam prashanta manasam khenam yoginam sukha uttamam upaiti shanta rajasam ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೂತಮಖಲ್ಮಷಂ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಉಪೈತಿ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಉಪೈತಿ ಉಪ ಉಪೈತಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಕ್ರಿಯಾಪದ ಸೊ ಉಪೈತಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ 
ఉప ఉపసర్గ ప్లస్ ఇన్ ధాతు ఏతి రీచస్ గతౌ రీచస్ ఉపైతి ప్రశాంత మనసం హేనం యోగినం సుఖం ఉత్తమం ఉత్తమం సుఖం ఉపైతి మోస్ట్ ఎగ్జాల్ట్ హ్యాపీనెస్ ఉత్తమం సుఖం దట్ ఈస్ ది సబ్జెక్ట్ ఉత్తమం సుఖం దిస్ ప్రశాంత మనసు ఏనం ప్రశాంత మనసు యోగినం రీచెస్ దిస్ పర్సన్ దిస్ యోగి హూ ఇస్ ప్రశాంత మనస హూ ఇస్ మైండ్ ఇస్ ట్రాంక్యుల్ నాట్ డిస్టర్బ్ బికాస్ మైండ్ కాంటర్ప్లేస్ కాంటర్ప్లేట్స్ అప్ ఆన్ ఆత్మ ద ఫోర్ ఉపైతి దర్ విల్ బి ఎ శాంతి సుఖ ఉత్తమం సుఖం ఉపైతి దెన్ ఉత్తమం సుఖం ఉపైతి ద మోస్ట్ ఎగ్జాల్టెడ్ హ్యాపీనెస్ ఉపైతి రీచెస్ దిస్ మెడిటేటర్ దెన్ శాంత రజసం బ్రహ్మభూత అకల్మషం శాంత రజసం ఆల్ ది రజస్ రజస్ మీన్స్ ఇంప్యూరిటీస్ సో ఆల్ ది ఇంప్యూరిటీస్ ద ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ విక్షేప ఎక్సెట్రా ద్వేష విక్షేప ఆల్ దీస్ ఆర్ మేడ్ శాంత రిజాల్ట్ బ్రహ్మభూతం అకల్మషం ద అకల్మషం దర్ ఇస్ నో ఇంప్యూరిటీ అకల్మషం బ్రహ్మభూత బ్రహ్మభూత ఇస్ వన్ ఊ హాస్ బికమ్ బ్రహ్మ బికమ్ బ్రహ్మ మీన్స్ వన్ ఊ ఇస్ బ్రహ్మ రెగనైజింగ్ దట్ అహం బ్రహ్మ ఇది బ్రహ్మభూతం ఆత్ అహం ఆత్మ బ్రహ్మ ఇది దట్ ఈస్ బ్రహ్మభూత నాట్ బికమింగ్ బికమింగ్ ఇస్ నాట్ కన్వర్టింగ్ ఇన్ టు సంథింగ్ కన్వర్టింగ్ ఇన్ టు బ్రహ్మ దర్ ఇస్ నో physical conversion because one is brahma it is a matter of knowing therefore the translation is because buddha to one has become brahma it means one one recognizes one is aware of this the truth this the satyam that aham brahma iti indeed the most exalted happiness reaches this meditator whose mind is tranquil shantaha whose impurities have all resolved shanta rajasam whose life is free from defects for all defects akalmasham akalmasham free from all defects impurities and who has become brahma to gyanam knowledge here bhagwan says that the most exalted happiness uttamam sukham reaches the person not he gains happiness but expression is here the sukham reaches him uttamam sukham ultimate happiness exalted happiness reaches the person as a result of contemplation this sukha reaches a person this then the next line this sukha is is such that it cannot be compared with any happiness or joy that we know that is very uttamam that is a superlative it is not vishayananda not a, not happy, not a, the type of happiness which are derived through the contact of the sense organs with the sense objects there are lagama painaha but here this is swarupa so therefore it is uttamam it cannot be compared with any happiness or joy that we know it is a fullness purnatvam that is happiness that is the swarupa of atma the purnatvam దఫర్ అనంత దఫర్ ఆనంద ఇది దట్ ఈస్ హ్యాపీనెస్ పూర్ణత్వం ఇస్ ఇన్ పూర్ణత్వం దర్ ఈస్ నో లిమిటేషన్ ద లిమిటేషన్ ఆఫ్ ది సబ్జెక్ట్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఇస్ రిజల్ట్ సో ఇన్ ఎనీ మూమెంట్ ఆఫ్ జాయ్ ఆర్ హ్యాపీనెస్ ద సీకర్ సార్ట్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఇస్ రిజల్ట్ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఇస్ రిజల్ట్ ఇన్ ఎనీ మూమెంట్ ఆఫ్ జాయ్ ఆర్ హ్యాపీనెస్ యాస్ ఇన్ ది సుషుప్తి అవస్ ద డీప్ స్లీప్ స్టేట్ ఆర్ ఈవెన్ ఇన్ ది వేకింగ్ స్టేట్ ఆల్సో there are some moments of joy and therefore there are some degrees of happiness priya moda pramoda the the subject object object fusion takes place it is resolved at least for the time being so there being nothing but atma even though there is an object or situation involved take music for example the music is there the person enjoying the music is there and the appreciation of music the form of thoughts vrittis is also there in this music sukham the division the division between the three is resolved that the, the three is the differences between the knower known and the knowledge 
experientially coalesce into one whole experience called Sukha. And what makes experience whole? The resolution of this subject of the difference. So therefore, Atma whose nature is oneness, consciousness, makes it Sukha. Atma is Purnaha, therefore, that oneness, at, purna, purna Atma, at, the Purna Atma, where there is no subject object division, everything being Atma, the subject is Atma, object is Atma. Therefore, there is no sense of limitation. Sense of limitation, which is brought about by Sharir Manasangata, resolves in the wake of this knowledge, therefore there is Sukham. And that is, therefore, it is the nature of the Atma, Sukham. So Sukha is a word already that we know. Sukha means happiness. In the experiential world, there are happiness, therefore we use the word Sukham. But in uh, as a Lakshana of Atma, we use the word Ananda. Iti. So, ananda. Therefore here, instead of Ananda, the word Uttamam Sukham. For Ananda, Uttamam Sukham means Ananda, Rupa of Atma. So, Sukha is a word that already we know. Therefore, it can be used as a definition. A Lakshana. It is Lakshana, not Visheshana. It's a Lakshana, nature. Swarupa of Atma. To point out the Swarupa of Atma as a wholeness, the limitlessness that stands undivided between an object and oneself. That's why Sukha is Anandaha. With that, this undivided whole, that is oneself, Atma is pointed out by the word Sukham. This Atma Sukham, Atma Sukham is not an Another type of sukha experienceable in the world, it is oneself, purna, one uh, atma which is purnaha, that is known as such. Therefore, that is ananda. Therefore, it cannot be ordinary sukha. The sukha we know in moments of joy. Therefore, it is not comparable to anything we know because it is atyantika, not apekshita. It is atyantika, it is absolute, it is total, it, because it is yourself. Therefore, uttama, ultimate. A sukha that is the nature of Atma, Swarupa of Atma. All the other sukhas, where there are, that which, are, which arises because of the fusion, because of the, the subject object, there it is, Dvita. The Dvita sukha, that there, the, that, 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 that is Vishayananda, that is, that there is Vishaya, Vishaya, the sense objects are there. Sense objects, sense object in the sense organs, either sense, even not your sense organs or the mind itself is enough. Mind itself revels on the experience of happiness. So continue to have this Dvaitam and uh, Sukham also. The object is there, subject is there. But even in that also, even in that also, when subject object fusion happens that that moment the sense of division temporarily drop that is why one experiences ananda so that ananda compared to our atmananda is swarupa it is those anandas those experiences of happiness are limited so therefore yet apekshika atyantika Atma Sukha is Varupa Sukha, which is Atyantika, whereas all the other Sukha, they are Apekshika, they are Agamapayinaha, they come and go, whereas because it is Varupa, therefore they cannot arise at any moment, any point of time, they cannot arise and therefore they cannot depart, because it is you. So that is the idea, therefore, Uttamam Sukham, Atyantika Sukham, Upaiti, the sukha reaches him as so the sukha descends on the person. It is an expression. The person recognizes himself as Brahma, Atma, therefore Uttamam Sukham, Uttamam Sukham Upaiti. As though he gains, it is not a, a, a gaining, there is no gaining involved, it is knowing that Aham Atma, that that Purnatam, the sense of limitation drops, that is a Sukham. So, therefore, Sukham Upaiti. Sukham reaches a person as, as though he is very Sukha himself. 
is the nature of ananda because atma being atma purnaha so therefore there is no dissension of any sukhani that is aham atma brahma bhuta aham brahma iti when the recognition takes place when the gyanam happens then there is uttama sukha remains with himself atma he doesn't move away from this darshanam atma darshanam he doesn't move away from himself the surupa of atma doesn't move away from the sense of purnatvam that is surupa so for want of a <clears throat> the for want of a, a word better word for want of a better word the, the, we we say that sukha iti it is ananda when it comes to ananda the word also we use uh, in our lang- in expression ananda meaning happiness experiential ananda vishayananda ananda sukham also happiness ananda but when we say atma sukha it is not an experience because it is a very knower so the knower when he realizes when he recognizes his nature he becomes happy so there is no obstacle to his happiness the obstacle to enjoying the vision of oneself oneself being atma or remote therefore therefore he remains therefore he remains in that without any without any the, the limitations without any obst- without there are no pratibandha there are no obstacles so therefore remains in the vision of oneness so that is the uttama sukham uttamam sukham upaiti then the next uh, ending who qualifies for this absolute sukha because it is swarupa who qualifies and whom does this uttama sukha reach the person who meditates upon at- atma here as prashantamanah the mind has to be prashantah relatively prashantah prakarshena shanta shanta rajas another expression also is the shanta rajasam brahma bhuta another expression an akal masham so the, all these words in the in this in the shloka they are these words are the object so the uttamam sukham is the subject upaiti reaches a person who is shanta rajas raj, shanta rajasam prashanta manasam brahma bhutam akal masham so all these words describe the the meditator so the meditator is prashanta manah the meditator is shanta rajah the meditator is brahma bhutah is is very very brahma the truth the brahma itself akal masah is pure there is no kalmasha there are no impurity there is no sense of limitation akal masah tam the shanta shanta this so uttamam sukham upaiti again as we have seen these words before as we have seen before these words describe the person and at the same time reveal the results of practicing dhyana dhyana yoga and the qualification all required by the person before the knowledge can be gained so these words reveal the, the qualification the adhigaritam on the part of the meditator therefore a person who is prashanta manas prashanta manas manaha is one whose, whose mind is resolved whose mind is tranquil for whom the mind doesn't pose any problem therefore uttama sukha reaches him the mind has to be relatively tranquil for contemplation and the relative con- con- relative tranquility is gained by karma yoga and upasana upasana ya chitta nishchalyam and in the field of this contemplation for the one who is prashanta manasah since he is an adhikari therefore uttamam sukham upaiti reaches him this uttama sukha reaches him or her this person is also shanta rajah rajas rajas means impurities here for one for whom all the rajas or impurities are resolved shantah rajah yes yes 
Saha, the one for whom all the impurities are resolved. So all these are Bhagavad Samasa, referring to the person, the meditator. Shankara Bhagavad Pada defines such impurity as fascination for things that are totally false. Moha di Klesha, based on one's raga, Ragas and Dvesha. That is why Raga Dvesha, Nivritya Raga Dvesha handling is done by Karma Yoga. So by which the, the mind is relatively made pure. The, the impurities, the, the Raga Dveshas are sufficiently taken care, handled, so that so that the meditator gains the capability to meditate on Atma, the Prashanta Rajas. The mind should not go after objects based on Raga and Dvesha. So therefore, Raga Dveshas are the impurity which are relatively less if not completely absent, complete, la complete absence of Dvesha is not possible. They are relatively less or it is well handled. Therefore, Shantarajaha, the person, is called Shantarajaha. Whereas the person being described, here is one who is no longer in the hands of Ragas and Dveshas. That is why he is called Akalmasha. Raga Dvesha do not dictate him. Because he had been a Karma Yogi, as a karma yogi, not yielding to one's raga dvesha, he had done karma with Ishwararapana buddhi and prasada buddhi. Therefore, raga dvesha do not, do not uh, dictate the person. Therefore, the person is not under the, the command of raga dvesha. That is why he is called akalmasha. Akalmasha means papa. Akalmasha means a defect in terms of adharma papa. Kalmasha. Papa. Therefore, one's pursuits in life are not improper is referred to as whose pursuit is are not improper is referred to as akalmasha. So yes, therefore the person leads a dharmika life is is uh, one's whose pursuits in life are not improper. It means proper. He's a dharmika. Being dharmika, therefore no papa attaches to the person. So, therefore, he is an ethical, righteous person, Akal Mashaha. One is such a person, that is why the 20 spiritual values are, that the values which are to be cultivated by Sadaka, mentioned in the 13th chapter of the Gita, or in other, or uh, by the by the expression Sadhana Chatushtaka Sampatti, the values, Shama, Dhamma, Titiksha, Shraddha, Samadhanam, Viveka, Vairagya, all these, all these are gained by leading a, a righteous life, dharmika life. Therefore, the person becomes akalmashaha, being pure. Only such person can become Brahma Bhuta. Why? Because Brahma is relate, Brahma is absolutely pure. Therefore, to know Brahma, one has to be relatively pure. Whatever Brahma is in total, that has to be present in a relative measure in the person. So therefore, akalmashaha san. Therefore, that person becomes Dharma Bhuta, who has a nishaya, the definite knowledge that Brahma is everything. Idam Sarvam, Brahma Yeva, everything is Ishwara. And because Brahma is everything, therefore, I am that Brahma. Tatu Brahma, Aham Asmi. Brahma being everything, I am everything. Because Brahma, Aham, there is no difference. Aham Atma Brahma. So I am everything. Idam Sarvam, Brahma Idam Sarvam, Aham Viti. That is the Brahma Bhuta. That is the meaning of the word Brahma Bhuta. Brahma is everything and that, Brahma, Brahma, and that Brahma is myself. Therefore, Aham Brahma Sarvam. Idam Sarvam Aham Iti. That is Brahma Bhuta. The person is referred to by the word Brahma Bhutam, Brahma Bhutaha. Here it is Dutya Bhakti, Brahma Bhutam, Tam Upaiti. This Uttamam Sukham. And this person, Brahma Bhuta, who is Akal Masha, who is Shanta Rajasa, and Prashanta Manasaha, Prashanta Manaha. Prashanta Manaha. In fact, it is in Pratama Bhakti, Prashanta Manaha, Shanta Rajaha. He gains Uttama Sukham, Ananda. Uttama Sukham is Ananda. It is this Varupa of Atma. Here we use the word Ananda. Uttama Sukham is equal to Ananda. Therefore, Sachit Ananda. Ananda Swarupa of Atma. Because of the knowledge of Atma, the Sukha as though reaches the person. 
as though it is located somewhere from there, it reaches a person. It is an expression. It is Swarupa. Therefore, there is no travel of Sukha to reach this person. Does Sukha reach the person or does the person gain Sukha? So in this shloka, in this shloka, 26th shloka, Uttama Sukha is a subject of the sentence. That is why it is in Pratama Bhakti, Uttamam Sukham Upaiti. And the person whom it reaches is the object. That is why they are on Dhyadhyad Bhakti, Shantarajasam, Brahmabhutam, Akalmasam, Iti, Prashantamanasam. Generally, we think of Uttama Sukha Ananda as something that must be gained. But here it is said that it reaches you, which is a different thing altogether. You become the object, the meditator becomes the object, and Ananda becomes the subject. The subject reach, reaches the object. The subject, the agent of the action of reaching. Then the question arises Does Ananda reach me or do I reach Ananda? In either way, it can be said, as Bhagavan says in the next shloka, that but we will see, we will see tomorrow. Because this question may arise in the mind of Arjuna. Therefore, Bhagavan clarifies by saying, Injanevam Sadatmanam Yogi, Gatakal Mashaha, Sukena Bermasan Sparsham, Sukam Atyantam Ashnute. So, therefore, Yogi Atyantam Sukam Ashnute. Previous shloka, it was Uttamam Sukam Upaiti Yoginam. Here, Yogi Atyantam Sukam. Atyantam Sukam is Uttamam Sukam. It means Ananda. Ashnute, he gains. Gaining is in terms of knowing. That is the Ashnute. So both ways it is correct. Therefore, if the doubt arises in the mind, in your mind, and the Bhagavan clarifies in the very immediate shloka itself, that the sukha reach you or you reach the sukha. Both the expressions are correct. We will see the shloka tomorrow. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Namad Pur Namadachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadhaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Vyona Harihi Om Tanyavadaha